Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading a Yaimiko Exisner by me. So let's get into it. Today was a little bit strange right from the start. She had felt it in the wind that something would change in her life. And perhaps that change would last her quite a long time. So she was quite curious to know what exactly that change would be. And so when she was done finishing her duties, which were quite frankly not a lot, she went to the forest. After all, the forest was certainly one place where you could encounter something very strange. And something that would change your life. So the odds of her finding that thing that would change her life here were very high. And she was quite excited. And that's when she heard it. The sound of rustling leaves. And then the snap of a twig. Someone was running. Or someone was sneaking up on her. It did not matter. Frankly, it made no difference. She was quite strong enough to defend herself. And she would not go into the forest completely defenseless. So... She couldn't help but find it very adorable that this person, who was acting so sneaky, was right behind her, watching her carefully from behind the tree. She could feel your presence after all. But when she turned around, there was one more surprise waiting for her. What was watching her was not just any person. No, it was a kitsune just like herself. And for the first time in decades, Miko was surprised. She was caught off guard, completely unprepared for the thing awaiting her. No wonder she knew it would be life-changing. There were many things that she had not seen for many years, and Kitsune's were one of them. She never expected to see another, for all she knew, she was the last one of her kind. But then, it seemed like she was very wrong. Because you're here, staring at her with wide eyes. Wide, adorable eyes, might she add? Because that factor was very important. And indeed, one of the aspects that made you more life-changing for her. She slowly walked over to you. Smiling. Well, hello there. I never expected to see any of my kind here. But it appears today's about to be very interesting. What's your name? She asked, her eyes glowing with interest. They were quite creepy, to say the least. But you were also curious about this person, who was the same kind as you are. For you have not seen anyone similar. Me? I am Lyon. You said. Fidgeting. And she couldn't help but giggle. Oh, you're adorable. How old are you? I've not seen anyone like this for so long. That's honestly a joy. She says. And she means that. And then, when you least expect it, her hand goes to scratch your ear, and you let out a little squeak. She laughs loudly, shaking her head. When I was your age, I too used to be easily flustered. But what could I say? I have gotten quite old. I didn't even tell you my age, you said. And she chuckled. I could figure it out. You have three tails, don't you? So about three centuries and something. It is a mystery we have not stumbled into each other for so long. Tell me, were you hiding on purpose? You couldn't help but blush. And you shook your head. No, I wasn't. There is a tribe on the outskirts of Inazuma. It's kind of hidden. Nobody ever goes there. Hmm. 
So you don't know who I am? No, I don't know you. Ah, uh, that's cute. I am Goodie. Goodie? So, what do you do? You ask in confusion. And she just shrugs. I don't know what I do. When you go back with me, you can ask around. Go back with you? But I'm not going anywhere. I want to go back to the tribe. And aren't you curious to know just what's outside of your tribe? What's beyond this forest and where I've been living? I'm sure there's no one else of your kind out there. Perhaps you may have been able to hide, but you can't convince me that there is a little tribe of kitsunes hiding in the wild. He fidgeted, and that's because she was right. You were the only one left. And, well, you didn't know what to say. She looked at you with a numbing look in her eyes, and turned around. You could come with me, or you could stay, whichever you feel like. I'm not forcing you. And if you stay, you know where to find me. This forest, on the night of a full moon, you'll be able to find me. She says, and that's all you get. Your hesitation stopping you from going with her. You don't know what's beyond the forest, and you're too scared to find out. But what you do know is that you want to know everything about this woman. She was interesting, a little intimidating, and sometimes it seemed like she had no concept of personal space. But that was fine. You were able to accept that. What mattered most to you was the fact that you wanted to see her, was that she was like you, and maybe you would be able to have someone that would understand you on a level that not anyone else did. And so you left, and you waited, and waited, until it was finally that night, the fated night where you would meet again. And by then, you had made your own decision. You would leave the tribe and go with her. You wanted to know more about her life, to meet more people, to see what's beyond the forest that you've always been afraid to cross. And if that's possible, if she can lead you to this new life that you're hoping for, then you're willing to take the risk, to do something new, Something you've never dared to do in your life. And once you walk there, she's waiting. The soft smile on her face. There you are. I expected you. And let me guess. You want to join me? To come back with me to the city? Um, yes. How would you know? There is no other option. After all, why else would you be here with that determined little look on your face? Give me some credit. After all, I'm not alt for nothing. I know a lot. And you know, living in the city will teach you some things. I'm quite sure of that. For a fox, he do seem to be quite a little bit naive. I'm not naive. Don't say that. Oh, don't get like that. You only make me want to rile you up more. You know, it's a little bit fun. And things have been getting a little bit stale around here. She says, like all of this is just so amusing to her. Honestly, you will never get her. But that only makes you more interested. And as she walks over to you, her steps somehow silent. No matter what she's slipping on, like she's floating. She touches your cheek, caressing it, and wraps an arm around your waist. So you've made up your mind, and you're coming with me to the city. Is that right? 
Yes, that's correct. I'm coming with you. I want to be with another Kitsune. But, well, I talked to the tribe and they said, you have different ways of doing things. Would you teach me? You asked, looking at her desperately. And he hoped she would be kind enough to do that. And her gaze only softened at your little plea. Because she could see how much she wanted this from your eyes alone. And she nodded, pulling you even closer. Yes, I can fulfill that wish for you. And that will be the first favor that you'll owe me. Oh, you. Well, I guess that's fair. I can deal with that. She smiled. And that day, she took your hand and led you away from where you were, from everything you knew, into a life that would quickly bloom into something else. And weeks passed, with Miku watching over you, teaching you everything she knows, because for the first time in so long, her heart fluttered for someone else. It was something she never imagined happening, something she couldn't see happening even in a million years. And yet, you were here. You changed all of our expectations, and you knew just what to do, even without actually being aware of what you were doing to her. Gujie, I really want to know something. You asked her one day, and she sat next to you, tilting her head. Ask away. I'm waiting. I know you never go to the forest. So, that day, it was not a coincidence, was it? Hmm, you're quite smart. Indeed, it was not. I have been able to know that there would be something very interesting waiting for me. And so I went to the forest. I had a hunch that whatever this little thing would be, it would be in there. And I was correct. Because then I found you. And it was the best thing I've done in a long time. Really? You're sure about that? I wouldn't tell you if I was not. Come on, there is no need to make me repeat myself. Not when you know my answer so well. And that's when you knew, and she knew as well, that there was something more to you, to both of you. It was like you were meant to be, like you were soulmates, and the universe was trying to get you two together that day. It was the best thing that happened in your lives. You enjoyed the city, and you enjoyed her company even more. She was a refreshing person, different from anyone that you've ever seen before. And she always teased you about everything, and yet, you couldn't help but fall in love with her more and more. Even though she was strange, even though there were things you may never understand, it would not be any different, because all you wanted was more. All you wanted was to stay with her, and to know more about her. Sometimes, you would cuddle up to her, and she would tell you stories of her past, tales that only seemed like legends, and you would listen with interest, closing your eyes as you fell asleep against her, and slowly you were getting closer and closer, until one day, it was important to draw the line of where that closeness would stop. My dear Ryan, there looks like there's a lot on your mind. So, what is it? You can talk to me if you want. You looked away, blushing, because the words on your mind and the feelings in your heart, they were far too much, and they were far too difficult to even articulate. You couldn't find it in yourself to just say that when you were sitting with the Amico of all people. 
You couldn't just guess what her reaction would be, because you had nothing to go off of. But you hoped that this gamble that you were about to take right now would be worth it. Because otherwise, you may lose everything in this new life. And that is not something that you're willing to do. Something that you want to risk. But the choices were very narrow. And for some reason, you had a good feeling about this. That you could gamble this. Because this would be a gamble that you would win. Miko, could I tell you something? Oh, you're calling me Miko now. No, good eh? And is that related to what you're telling me now? Maybe a little bit. But not too much. You said. What do you think? And she chuckled. Well, you can go ahead. I'm sure whatever you have to say is very interesting. And she looks at you with those eyes of hers that feel like they're piercing into your soul. Like you already know what you're about to say. And whatever words are about to slip from your mouth are completely useless. Because she already knows. She's already figured you out. And words are useless now. Miko, I... I love you. So much. And I have been feeling this way for a while now. I didn't know whether I should say it or not. It feels too much for me. And I'm scared. I'm scared of losing you. I wouldn't be able to handle that. She looks at you. Her eyes widening for only a moment. Before they softened again. A teasing glint to them. My, my, I never expected you to confess so soon. But here you are. I suppose you could say I'm proud of you. I have been waiting, and I wasn't sure if you would ever actually say the words. You've been waiting? So you've known? For a while? Oh, yes. I mean, what else did you expect? I'm not just anyone, am I? She says her hand going to cup your cheek, and you blushed brightly, forced to look into her eyes. But you know, I just wanted you to earn it when I say them back, so I let you try and struggle on your own until you were able to say the words. I love you too, darling. I've loved you for as long as you've loved me, if not even more. Your breath hitched at that, and your mouth was just open, like you were trying to figure out what to say, but nothing came out at all. And she couldn't help but laugh, holding you closer, pulling you into her arms. And before you knew it, her lips were on yours. And your heart stopped for a moment, and then it soared. Because this, this moment was everything you've dreamed of. And when she pulled away, you looked at her with so much love in your eyes, only to be met with the same love in her own. Well, I'm glad I found you that day. You blushed, burying your face into the crook of her neck. I'm glad I found you too, Miko. You're my everything, and I truly mean it. And she knew that. She knew, because it was written in the stars, how the two of you were to meet, and how you would stay together. It was weaved by fate itself, and that was stronger than anything. It would be a bond unbreakable by any force, a bond that would last for years, decades, and centuries. A bond that she has longed for, and one that you've dreamt of for all your life.